Congress said you can't use human prisoners. Fans of DC have been waiting to see what James Gunn and Peter Safran have in their plans for the DCU for quite a while now. With the first feature film set to come out next year, marking Superman's debut, it was fascinating to see that the first DCU project would be the animated series set to come out later this year. As the trailer came out, fans got excited about the next batch of characters our favorite director will play with this time. Although you might not know all of them, you might be surprised that some of them are related to characters we have already seen before, and then there is an entirely original character in this batch too. Let's look at all the confirmed members of the Creature Commandos set to appear in the DCU animated series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Creature Commandos. According to the plans for the animated series, it is set right after the events of Peacemaker 2022, where Amanda Waller realized her failure in putting the lives of these individuals in danger as they went on these crazy missions. So, what did she do instead? Is the Creature, a black ops team, called the Creature Commandos. In the comic books, a group of supernatural beings came together to handle things that looked out of the ordinary. Dr. Phosphorus. If James Gunn is allowed to helm a comic book universe's cinematic world, he will combine all the obscure characters for some of the most unbelievable stories. Dr. Alexander Sartorius has a long history with Batman, as he wanted to build a nuclear plant in Gotham City, but the plans were cancelled when the people went against him. Eventually, Sartorius would make one far from the city until a meltdown occurred. Sartorius, hiding from the explosion behind some bags of sand, ended up getting 500 million slivers of radioactive sand into his body. Body. Due to this, he would be in a continuous stage of burning, and Sartorius would start a quest for revenge on the people of Gotham who stopped him from fulfilling his plans. One of his first attempts involved poisoning the water supply of Gotham, in which the Dark Knight would intervene, and they ended up having a clash at the nuclear power plant where Dr. Phosphorus's story started. Dr. Phosphorus ended up falling into the nuclear reactor during their battle, and it would cause a big explosion that would lead everyone to believe that he was dead. It's about time Batman had a contingency plan for his villains, who tend to fall into some of the most dangerous things. Alan Tudyk is a veteran of the genre. He will voice the character in James Gunn's unique storytelling style, and even though the character looks like Ghost Rider, Phosphorus is probably a lot more poisonous in person with his enemies. The being was utterly transformed into something freakish, and all his organs and other bodily functions were reduced to the nuclear radiation he had flowing through his body. Tudyk has portrayed some of the most extraordinary characters in history, one of the most popular of them being Kate. 2 so from Star Wars Rogue One. The actor also did some work for DC before, as he played Mr. Nobody on Doom Patrol, which is probably one of the greatest shows in DC. One might wonder what sort of position this character might hold in the team, but we can be sure that his hatred for Gotham might be something Gunn will play out in the series. Frankenstein. So, the DC people managed to bring their version of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein's monster with this character, who is also known as Frank at times. Frankenstein's monster was created by Dr. Frankenstein, who used the blood of an alien king, Mr. Melmoth, and the stolen body parts we know of from Mary Shelley's masterpiece. Yeah, that's the unique addition to the character's origin story, and he did manage to kill everyone involved in his torture at the lab, including Dr. Frankenstein himself. Frank had a long history as he participated in several wars, including World World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. During this time, he would work as an operative of Superhuman Advanced Defense Executive, a counterterrorism organization that works towards fighting against monsters and some weird going on. The Creature Commandos is the primary team of field agents for the SHADE. Apart from being immortal and not requiring food, drink, or even breathing, Frankenstein is a skilled swordsman and marksman based on his experience fighting various monsters over the years. David Harbour, who has some solid experience in the supernatural characters of the superhero world since he played Hellboy, will be voicing the character. Frankenstein's addition to the DCU's first project opens the doors for exploring this world's supernatural elements. We can trust James Gunn to give us an exciting exploration of such a character. According to Harbour, his Frankenstein would be Eudite, intellectual, romantic, and brilliant, thus ensuring the comedy of a character with such a weird range of personas. Did you know that Frankenstein had such a firm will that there was a time when the Ring chose him as an ideal candidate for the Green Lantern Corps? 
Bride of Frankenstein. We are back in the Boris Karloff universe of horror films, and Elsa Lanchester is back with her feature Bride of Frankenstein. The fact that James Gunn thought about bringing the bride with Frankenstein piques our interest in this series, which will be an absolute blast. In the DC Comics, Bride's arc is very well intermingled with Frankenstein as she was created as a companion for Frank, and they even tried to have a child using S-H-A-D-E technology, but it was a failure since the son became unstable and attacked the bride only to be killed by Frank in the end. This act would be the very thing that would bring a rift between these two beings, as Bride never forgave Frank for his actions. But the twist would be that their son was alive, and they would come across him again in the future, only to a much sadder end as the son begged for death. Now, since the duo will be appearing in the series together as members of the Creature Commando, they might give their son a mention or two. Now, Gunn's recreation of the character will come with exciting changes. This time, the changes focus more on the character's physicality. Comic book nerds might remember Bride having four arms, but she will only have two in the upcoming animated series. This change is probably in keeping with the idea that the character might appear in the live-action DCU projects. Indira Varma of Game of Thrones, Disney's Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and Luther will be playing Bride, and we are already excited to see this couple in the animated series. Congress said you can't use human prisoners. Rick Flagg Sr. We are all very well aware of Rick Flagg and his service to the nation in the time he spent working with the Suicide Squad, both catching a few of these infamous villains and working next to them. His death in 2021's Suicide Squad was a significant emotional moment in the movie and it left an impact on Peacemaker 2 since he killed him. But now we will see his father in action as Rick Flagg Sr. will join the Creature Commandos in their missions. Rick was a fighter pilot during World War II and his accomplishments allowed him to be selected as the leader of the Suicide Squadron. Rick Flagg plays a significant role because he is responsible for getting his son into the Suicide Squad as the leader based on the skill he can endow on him. Frank Grillo will be taking on this role, and that's probably one of the most exciting casting choices, considering the actor has had an extensive career working on various comic book characters. Marvel fans might remember him for playing Crossbones in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then the actor has played multiple roles. He has proven his expertise in delivering the right amount of action. It is almost evident that Gunn didn't randomly pick this cast of actors for the animated series and is probably planning the live-action interpretations in his mind. Like his son, Rick Flagg Sr. has the combat skills and leadership skills required to handle this team of convicted felons. Plus, it has been confirmed that the actor will reprise the role in the second season of Peacemaker, which might mean that Peacemaker might have to face the consequences of his actions. While his father might have turned out to be a lousy, Rick Flagg Sr. might be a tough nut to crack for Peacemaker. Nina Mazursky Nina Mazursky might be the more maternal figure in this group of misfits dealing with bizarre problems. She had been working as a scientist for Shade for a long time, and she lost her daughter at a young age due to a terminal illness. Nina couldn't handle herself emotionally, so she did some crazy creations. She grew a maternal instinct for the first generation of the Creature Commandos, and she intended to make a second generation of them too. Nina would create a fully formed human being capable of transformations. When she involved herself as one of the subjects in the experiment, she would turn into an amphibian. Zoe Chow, known for comedy projects like the After Party series and 2020's Downhill, will play this role. Not many details are given regarding this character, except for what we can think of her based on her appearance in the trailer, which is similar to the persona we know of. Princess Alana Rostovich Now Marvel is known for creating entirely new characters for their projects at times, and even changing a character's arc entirely. But DCU will also do that with their first addition to the DCU franchise, Princess Alana Rostovich, an original character created for the animated series. Since the character was announced, fans have been wondering who this character could be and her association with the Creature Commandos. Still, Gunn has clarified on social media that this character is entirely original. Specific observations could be made about the character based on the promotional material we have seen. Ilana doesn't appear in the first poster released for the show, which might mean that she would probably end up meeting the team later or become a part of their mission or something. Maria Bakalova will be taking on this fresh addition to the DC lore, and she has had the chance to work with James Gunn before. The last time he added her to his project was for a short role in almost a blink and you will miss cameo. So, there are some things that we can expect from this character in the series. She has been brought so they can kill her halfway through the show, 
and we don't freak out about the decision to do so, thus saving the original characters to survive. It can also be a character that has been brought up so that James Gunn can communicate some aspects of the team in the Creature Commandos, thus resorting to the original character approach. Knowing Gunn's work, we can be sure he can make any character grow on us with an arc of his choice. It's been oh so long since G.I. Robot has sent Nazi- G.I. Robot. The G.I. Robot is one of the robots created back during World War II to fight for the Allies by the U.S. military. Now, it is confusing to identify which G.I. Robot we will see in the Creature Commandos, considering a total of six characters have taken on this title and served their time. As a complete twist, the one in Creature Commandos doesn't look similar. Now, there are two on its helmet, which might indicate that it is the second prototype of Jake. Jake was the first G.I. robot to have been a part of the Creature Commandos in the comic books. While talking about the character in an interview, Sean Gunn, who will be voicing the character, revealed that he finds the character very interesting. According to him, G.I. Robot is primarily motivated towards killing as many Nazis as possible. The fact that G.I. Robot is being voiced is an interesting choice, considering the character hardly utters a single word in the comic books. However, considering that Sean Gunn will be taking on the role and that the actor already has a lot of roles in the DCU, we can be sure that his brother has plans for him in the future. Just thinking about it makes one wonder what a crazy combination of classic horror characters lined up next to a military android. He's pissing! Weasel. Weez doesn't need an introduction. He is just Weasel. And we are sure he was one of the few who managed to survive the second team that Amanda Waller had sent on the suicide mission. While everyone dies a horrible death, Weasel is also expected to die as he doesn't know how to swim and probably asphyxiated to death. But in the end, we see him coming to land and coughing up water. He does have a history that made him a felon, as he killed 27 children before he was incarcerated in Belle Reve. But now it seems that Weasel will have an exciting history, considering we will see him in action although we are hoping that Gunn won't throw him in for a joke cameo. Last time, considering the first team sent for the mission dying, it made sense and defined the concept of Suicide Squad. When Gunn was asked about the character, he clarified that this is one character he will keep consistent in the DCU and appear in several other projects. That sounds like he is not the comic relief guy. This character is among the others that Sean Gunn will portray in the DCU. John Economos. We are already much more aware of John Economos than the last time we saw him in Suicide Squad, considering the character made a solid appearance in The Peacemaker. A lot about the character puts him apart from the other characters who were working with Argus, assuming he turns out to be well-meaning, even though he did work on the betting of the individuals of the Suicide Squad who would survive till the end. Following the events of The Peacemaker, Economos landed up in a hospital where he was treated, and later he would return to Belle Reve. But the last time we had the chance to see him was when Waller ordered him to join Harcourt to recruit Billy Batson to join the Justice Society. When it was first announced that he would be appearing in The Peacemaker, fans wondered what role he would play in that story. But we are very much aware of his role and persona, and that's why there's a complete lack of apprehension about his addition to the Creature Commandos. We can be sure that he will nail the character as he joins this early rendition of Suicide Squad. Steve Agee's John Economos might not look like much at first glance, but the actor is probably one of the most remarkable additions to the franchise. Marvelous Verdict As we said, James Gunn knows how to work with the less popular characters of DC, and he has proven that with his work so far. It is a fact that only a few people knew about Guardians of the Galaxy until he made a fantastic movie that would end up being the best trilogy of the franchise. Even though putting a story in the TV series format might mean a lot, we can trust Gunn to make the most of the animated format in giving us the supernatural and crazy from this side of the world of DC. Considering these characters will be appearing in the DCU later, it would be interesting to see if Gunn puts some Easter eggs on subsequent appearances. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.